This conference will now be recorded. All right, this is the video that we're going to um, cover some of the problems that we skipped over quadratics in form, um, anything to do with the inequalities that we didn't get to in class, and of course some of the things with writing linear equations. So the only one we had left over from the quadratic in form section was this one right here, and notice this is kind of a difficult problem because you've got these rational exponents um, in your quadratic in disguise, but you also have negative exponents. So, and they've used the letter U, which means we can't really substitute, uh, substitute with the letter U. So we're going to call this one uh, V. We're going to say let's let V equal U to the negative one-third. And notice this is a quadratic in disguise because this exponent is half of this one. So that would be rewriting this as 6V squared minus 13V plus 6 equals 0. We would try to factor it, so 6 times 6 is 36, that's 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6, those are all the factors. Uh, it has to multiply to a positive 36, but add to negative 13, so that would work if we let negative 4 and negative 9 be there. So this would be 6v squared minus 9v minus 4v plus 6 equals 0. We factor by grouping. We can pull out a 3v from the first pair. That would leave me with 2v minus 3. Pull out a negative 2 from the second pair. That would also leave me with a 2v and a minus 3. So then I get 3v uh, minus 2 and 2v minus 3 as my factors. Set them both equal to 0. So 2v minus 3 equals 0, 3v minus 2 equals 0. Solve for each one. So that's v equals 3 divided by 2. And then 3v equals 2, so v equals 2 divided by 3. The problem is we have to remember this was not originally v when we started out. It was u to the negative one-third. So u to the negative one-third is three-halves and u to the negative one-third is two-thirds. Now, we can flip that and make that one over u to the one-third, because that has a negative exponent, and one over u to the one-third equals two-thirds. We want to cross-multiply to try to solve this, so this will be two equals 3u to the one-third, or two-thirds equals u to the one-third. And this will be 3 equals 2u to the one-third, or 3 over 2 equals u to the one-third. So since these were already reciprocals of each other, we kind of get the same thing. They just flip-flopped which one is which. To get rid of the third power, you raise both sides to the 3 over 1 power. Um, so that one-third will go away. Now, we're allowed to do this, remember, because this is an odd root, and odd roots you can do as long as, you know, it pretty much no matter if the other side's positive or negative. If this was an even root, we would have to have positive number on the left side or the right side before we could do that. So this would be 8 over 27. That's one solution. The other one, when we cube everything, we're going to get 27 over 8. And there are our two solution sets. So the next thing I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to jump to the notes on inequalities. Um, we learned about quadratic, polynomial inequalities, and rational inequalities. And there were a couple that we skipped over in class, so we're going to go through those. The first one is B on the second part of that packet. And this one we need to factor the bottom first, so 4 plus x and 4 minus x, since it is a perfect square uh, with a subtraction between them. We already have our zero on the right side, so remember we want to break this down into what values from the top and what values from the bottom make us equal zero on either location. Uh, on top, zero would make 2x equal zero. On bottom, we're going to get a negative 4 and a positive 4. And remember that the bottom values are always open circles no matter what. The top will obey the actual symbol, which in this case is going to be open as well since there's no equal to. Our next step is to put the numbers on the number line from least to greatest, so negative 4 
and then zero, and then four. Write our interval notation. So since everything ended up being open, I'm going to put open circles on all my endpoints. So this is negative infinity to negative four, and then negative four to zero, and then zero to four, and then four to infinity. Pick a test value in each region. So I'm going to pick negative five, negative two, positive two, and five. We list our factors over here. So my factors are two x, uh, four plus x, four minus x, and then we want this to be less than zero at the end. So with the four minus x, you're going to be careful with your signs specifically. That one's one you'll have to be very just aware of. Um, two times negative five is negative. Four plus negative five is negative. Four minus a negative five is actually four plus five. So that's actually going to be positive. Two negatives overall in the rectangle make a positive. Two times negative two is negative. Four plus negative two is positive. Four minus negative two would be four plus two, so that's also positive. One negative overall makes the region negative. Two times two is positive four. Uh, four plus two is positive. Four minus two is also positive, so this is a positive region overall. And then uh, when we do five, that would be 10. 9 and negative 1. So that makes an overall negative region. This right here tells you what to circle. We are looking for less than 0, so we're circling the negative regions. So my answer is negative 4 to 0, because that's my interval on top of this column, unioned with 4 to infinity. So there's my solution for this one. Let's look at another one. This one's kind of interesting because it's not a 0 on the right side, so you have to move it over first. So the way you do that is you subtract 4 to the other side. And I like to write it as 4 over 1, because then I can see that I need to get a common denominator. So I'll multiply top and bottom by 3x plus 5 on both parts of that second fraction. So this, remember to distribute this negative with the 4. So this is going to become x minus 2 on top minus 12x minus 20 over 3x plus 5, and then less than or equal to 0. And then we get adding like terms on top. That would be negative 11x minus 22, and then 3x plus 5 on the bottom, less than or equal to 0. Sorry, my ink was frozen for a second there. All right, so now we want to uh, figure out what makes the top and bottom both equal zero. I would not factor out a negative 11 on that top. Remember we said that can mess up your signs and your sign chart. Uh, bottom is gonna be open because bottom is always open. And the value that makes the bottom equal to zero is subtract five and divide by three, so negative five thirds. The top follows the symbol, which means it's gonna be closed. Since that is an equal to. And we need to set that equal to 0 to see what that would be. So add 22. Divide by negative 11, it's going to be negative 2. So negative 2 for the top and negative 5 thirds for the bottom. Um, negative 2 is actually smaller than negative 5 thirds because negative 5 thirds is negative 1.67, I think. You'd have to work that out to see that on a calculator. So negative 2 and then negative 5 thirds is bigger, closer to 0. Um, this is a closed circle on this part, but open on this one. So that means brackets when we get to the negative 2. And parentheses on the negative 5 thirds. Okay, so test values. I can pick negative 3 for less than negative 2. Since that's about negative 1.7, if you round up, I'm going to go with negative 1.8 as my number in between. And bigger than this, I can go with 0. My factors were a negative 11x minus 22. And 3x plus 5. And we want an overall less than or equal to 0. So we're going to be looking for negatives again. So negative 3 times negative 11 is positive 33 minus 22 is 11, so that's positive. 
negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 5 is negative so that's going to give you an overall negative region um, if you don't know off the top of your head with decimals you want to plug those into your calculator because those you have to be very careful it's easy for them to change signs on you without you noticing it so that was negative 11 times 1.8 which is negative and then minus 22 so that's going to be negative 2.2 then we want to do 3 times 1.8 which is negative and then plus 5 notice that's also negative so two negatives make a positive 0 would give me a negative 22 and a positive 5 so that's an overall negative so there are two regions that work negative infinity to negative 2 bracket union with negative 5 thirds with a parentheses to positive infinity so there is the solution for that one all right we have one more in this section and then we're going to do a few from the graphing and writing linear equation section so we did D in class, uh, so we're looking at E, which has an X on top of that uh, first fraction, so that's different. So we need to first start off with getting the fractions on the same side together, so we have a zero on the other side. Get a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply um, this one by the X plus 2, and this one by the 2X minus 1. And we normally write that on top and bottom. My pen's just acting up a little bit, so I'm just going to assume you know to do it to the bottom, too. So if we distribute that, that's going to be x squared plus 2x. And then I need to distribute this negative 3, so that's going to be negative 6x and then plus 3, all over x plus 2, 2x minus 1, because we have that common denominator now. And that's greater than or equal to zero. We'll want to uh, clean up the top. That's x squared minus 4x plus 3 over x plus 2 x and 2x minus 1. And that's greater than or equal to zero. That top, I believe, factors. So we need to go ahead and do that. So that's going to be x minus 3 and x minus 1. over all of this so x plus 2 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0 all right so our top values look like they're 3 and 1 that's what would make both of those equal 0 for the bottom it would be negative 2 and 1 half if we solve those set equal to 0 bottom is always open top obeys the symbol which means the top is going to be closed in this scenario and then we want to list these on our number line from least to greatest <coughs> excuse me all right so we have negative two and then positive one half would be next and then one and then three uh, the top numbers were 3 and 1, and they're both closed. Hang on just a second. There we go. And then the top, uh, the top ones were are closed and the bottom ones were open sorry so this is negative infinity to negative 2 parentheses negative 2 to 1 half both with parentheses 1 half with a parentheses to 1 with a bracket 1 with a bracket to 3 with a bracket and 3 with a bracket to infinity test values I'm going to use negative 3 0 since that changes signs I'm going to have to use a decimal here, so maybe 0 0.7, uh, 2, and then 4. The factors that we're going to plug these into are x, min or excuse me, x uh, minus 3, x minus 1, x plus 2, and 2x minus 1. 
and we want an overall greater than or equal to zero. So we're looking for pluses. All right, so let me extend these lines down. So let's start plugging these in. So negative 3 minus 3 is negative. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative. 2 times negative 3 is negative. 6 minus 1 is negative. That is 4 negatives, which makes that an overall positive. Uh, 0 would give me negative, negative, positive, negative. So that's an overall negative sign. 0. 0.7 minus 3 is negative. 0. 0.7 minus 1 is negative. 0. 0.7 plus 2 is positive. 2 times 0. 0.7 is 1.4. Minus 1, it would actually be positive. Two negatives overall make a plus. Two minus three is negative. Two minus one is positive. Two plus two is positive. And two times two is four. Minus one is also positive. So that comes out as one negative, which makes the whole sign negative. And then if we plug four in, I believe we get all four things come out positive, which makes an overall plus. So because we're looking for greater than or equal to zero, we're circling all of those plus signs. So this is going to be negative infinity to negative 2, parentheses, unioned with 1 half, and then that's a parentheses, not a bracket there, um, and then 1 with a bracket, and then unioned with bracket 3 to infinity. All right, so that finishes up the inequality section. Okay, so the last thing we had left over from notes throughout the last week or so was there were a few more problems in the writing equations of lines. Um, there was this extra graph that I skipped over. So this one is just another y equals mx plus b, so it's pretty simple. You plot the y-intercept first, and then you use your rise and run. So then this is a negative 1 over 2, or you can think of it as a 1 over negative 2. Just depends on if you want to make the top the negative or the bottom the negative. It will still give you the same graph. So if we go to positive 3 on the y-axis and put a point, this says I can go down 1 and then right 2. That's one way to get a point. This says I can go up 1 and left 2 from my point. So notice those both end up on the same line together. So there is that one. I left another one of the writing equation ones. So this one says find the slope-intercept form of the line that satisfies the given conditions. So we have uh, an x-intercept of negative 5, 0, because that's how x-intercepts look, a y-intercept of 0, negative 1. So since we don't have the slope, we'll need to use those two points to find the slope. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That ends up being negative 1 over 5. And you actually already have your b because you have your y-intercept. So this can just be easily written as y equals negative 1 fifth x minus 1. You can jump straight in if you know the y-intercept. If you don't, you would use your y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1 like we did on b in class. All right, there's just two more left over on this packet. Uh, it says use the slope-intercept form to find the slope and the y-intercept of the given equation and then sketch its graph. So you are supposed to use slope-intercept, which means you need to solve for y. So we would subtract over the x first. And that would make this negative x minus 15. We would divide everything by negative 5. So that makes this y equals positive. This is a 1 on top of that fraction there. So that's going to be positive 1 fifth. Excuse me. Sorry about this. My, my internet connection is not the best today, and so my pen is lagging. Um, so this is positive one-fifth x and then positive three. So we plot three on the y-axis and we have a slope of up one, right five. So up one, right one, two, three, four, five. You could also go down one and left five, but you only technically need two points to graph the line. All right, and then the final problem. A baby weighs 10 pounds at birth, and three years later, the child's weight is 30 pounds. Assume that childhood weight in pounds is linearly related to age in years, T. So when they say write W in terms of T, that means T is like the X variable, because usually we say write Y in terms of X. So that means W is kind of our Y value here. 
So then at birth, a baby is zero years old. So zero comma 10 is one of the ordered pairs. At three years old, the baby is 30 pounds. If we wanna write that equation, we need to write, first of all, find the slope since they said this is linear. So that'd be 30 minus 10 over three minus zero. So that's 20 over three. So this would be, um, our, and we have our y-intercept, so this is just going to be w equals 20 over 3 times t for the age plus the 10, which was the baby's starting weight. So there's my equation. What is the weight of the child on its sixth birthday? Well, that's just plugging into our formula for age, so we'll do 6 right there. So that's 120 divided by 3, so that's going to be 40 plus 10, so that means that that child, if they follow that same growth chart, which normally children's growth is not linear, but we're assuming it is in this problem, um, they would weigh 50 pounds. Then the next question is, at what age will the child weigh 70 pounds? So we're saying 70 is the goal, and we don't know the age, so the T is the thing we're solving for. So we would subtract 10 over first, and then we need to get rid of this fraction, so when you want to get rid of a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. So we will multiply both sides by 3 over 20. Ah. So that's going to just be t on the right side. 20 goes into 63 times, so this is just 3 times 3. So the child would be 9 years old when they weigh 70 pounds, if this is a consistent linear growth. All right, that gets us caught up on any missing problems that we had, and hopefully you guys will find this video useful.